and welcome to part number five of Gotham Guide. Today we're going to be playing against folks that are 1800 plus. The 1600 plus part four was brutal. I mean, there was a lot of really complex middle games, and the the there there was there was chances I was almost losing in certain positions. So I'm expecting that today and onward, I have legitimate losing chances. That these players have a good opening sense. Uh, their middle games are strong, their end games are strong, their time management is going to be good. And so here, we're getting things going with an E6-B6. This is chapter one of the E6-B6 course. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Knight F6. Now, Queen E2 is the main line. Let's see how much main line theory my opponent knows. Um, at this point, if you're watching, first of all, if you're in this rating range and you're watching, uh, really, really try to, you know, focus on every phase of the game opening middle game and end game e5 is not it's not that good of a move you can just go knight e4 here anyway um and if queen e2 d5 is completely fine but now queen e2 is not possible yeah he needs to play like this here what i like to do is just to take the bishop uh and you know this pin is this pin is good i can take right away and double the the pawns but then my opponent can just play rook g1 so i'm not so sure about that um, what else can we do? I guess we can just castle. If we castle, I wonder what he's going to play. Normally, in these positions, if this bishop... Yeah, so, like, he plays... This bishop doesn't have to take on c3 anymore. You only have to take on c3, and you would know that if you had the course. He plays knight e4 to get out of danger. Now he's maybe looking at stuff like this. Uh, do I play d6, h6 to get... You know, he he's obviously looking also at this move. Uh, maybe... Maybe f5. And the idea is that if he takes, I'm going to take with the bishop. And he doesn't have this strong outpost on, on in the center anymore. My bishop's nice. So position just looks pretty balanced to start the game. I have two bishops. He's got a very solid center. Let's go... Yeah, probably just have to develop. So for a moment, I'm going to block my bishop, but I always have 97 ideas. I'm not concerned about this because my queen's coming out. He castles. Maybe h6, I was thinking, just to get that under control, or this reroute idea with the knight. But maybe queen e7 and, and bring my second rook. I kind of like that. But, you know, queen e7, I, I know he's going to bring a rook to this file. So, not an easy position to play. Knight e7, maybe this plan. Okay, let's go for knight e7, the reroute idea. There is not, good, like I said, there is not going to be, I, I, I feel like the games with white when I'm playing my E4 course stuff are going to be a lot easier than playing black. With black, you're looking for solidity, you're looking for an easy to play opening where you don't need to spend a lot of time, although I have really failed to do that in this game, I'm, I'm really taking my time. Um, but with white, we're, we're going to be looking for aggressive opening ideas. That's, that, that's going to be... Something that we are definitely on the lookout for. This position is, like, really not easy to play. Um, let's play queen e7. So I do want to connect my rooks. Uh, but with the rook and the queen on the same line, I need to be mindful of the fact that a strike in the center could be coming. And, you know, I would love to step out of the way, but then knight g5 is potentially problematic. That's a weird move. That move I don't understand at all, actually. So, in every game, this is going to happen. Uh, what if I just immediately go after the pawn? You know, sometimes you don't need to uh, reply like this, but yeah, yeah but see, now, now I've distracted him. You know, he's, he's focused over there. So, if takes, takes, and then we trade. Let me, let me take. I mean, I, I need to make decisions a little faster. I don't think I have to take the rook. Like, he could take me. I don't have to take, I give him the file. But how do I make progress on the other side of the board? Do I have any tactics? I don't think so. Um, maybe knight h4. Looking for some simplification in the position. If he takes my bishop check, I take with the queen. I maintain control. Well, defense, not control of the knight. Uh, and if I get rid of these two knights... That's a weird move. My bishop is strong. Uh, position is probably roughly equal, so now we have to employ phase number two of this video, which is going to be outplaying people from 
positions with seem, you know, seemingly equal positions. Seem, seeming, seeming equality. That was very bad English. Okay, so the first bit of imbalance, I have the open file. The second bit of imbalance, he has three pawns here and I have four. I have a bit more active bishop, and I have potential to maybe attack him. This is a weakness, potentially. Rook a3 can maybe do some damage. Another idea I see is bishop d5 and rook a2 with some second rank attack. Ooh. Okay, I see an immediate way to maybe punish that move. So, I have vision here, and he thinks it doesn't matter. But what about rook a2? And if he takes, I take check. It's not mate, because he could block with the bishop. But then I take on c3, maybe? So this is a nice move. Bishop c2, I just take it. So his queen needs to guard the rook. Which means either this, this, or this. Uh, actually, he cannot go to the back rank. He has to play queen e3. He has to play queen e3. If he goes to the back rank, queen f2, queen g2. He doesn't blunder mate. It would have been nice if he did. Um, and I don't have, like, bishop takes f3 doesn't quite work because he just takes with the... Oh, wait, no, bishop takes f3 does work. Oh, that's so nice. The queen is overloaded. Because if I take on f3, he can't take with the queen, and the rook and the queen link up on h2. So bishop takes f3 wins a pawn, at least. And he can't take because queen h2. King f1, queen g2 mate. That's like the whole power of the rook and the queen coming in from opposite sides of the board. And the reason why bishop f3 was the first thing I considered is because you have to look at captures. Like, this is a check, but it sacrifices a full rook. But this is a very unusual tactic. And my queen is just so powerful. So, one move weakened his position to such an extent that we're just able to destroy it immediately. It's incredible. And why do you think Ben Feingold says never play f3? <laughs> like, so, ouch. Um, so, obviously, the threat is rook g2. I think he has to play something like bishop f1. Might be the only move. And then I need to... Okay, well, he doesn't and yeah this is uh this is not good anymore i need to not hang perpetual so queen a8's not a threat what is the easiest way to convert this position you know for instructional value i'm gonna sacrifice on f1 and make it a pawn end game that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna sacrifice you don't need to do this but i'm gonna make it a pawn end game maybe b5 to fix this pawn here can't move forward. This is called fixing the pawns. And now I'm going to win this pawn endgame. Or hopefully win it. <laughs> I sure hope I can win it. So, of course, you need to outflank. Very important in the pawn endgames. So, h5 and h4. Uh, he's going to go back to f3. I'm going to go here. Or he's going to do that. Hmm. Okay, let's back up for a second. Let's figure let's let's figure this thing out. Wait a second. Is D5 am I gonna am I gonna embarrass myself here? Okay, luckily not. This was a big risk. <laughs> so I I better win. Uh G5, yeah, G5, yeah. This looks this looks like the way to go. He shouldn't take. He should not take, because I, I I I should be the one taking. Okay, I'm gonna give him a chance to mess up again and take. I again no. He messes up and takes. And uh, in g4. And now this is probably easily winning for the reason that I can play king h3, dance around the pawn, and I don't think he can bring his king forward. Yeah, I don't think he can do this, because if he comes here, I'm taking. h4, g5, h3, g6, h2. I'm just going to take. And... Uh, I'm behind him, and there's nothing he can do. He can give me all his pawns, which would be nice, but I'm just going to take his pawns. So, this is game over. King c5 and c6 defends the pawn. King takes b4. I don't know if he's going to try to flag me, but let's not forget that it's, it's 3 plus 2, so that would honestly be pretty impressive. Yeah, and he just resigns. Okay, that was, uh, that was a tough game, obviously. I, to I told you right away it was going to be tough. Uh, creating winning chances from positions that don't, you know, don't seem like they're, they're potentially possible. Uh, so the opening was, was easy. You know, we just played chapter one, we got the bishop, we brought this guy back. And now, in a position where you're lacking space, you need to look for the smart trades. 
So this trade is nice just to create a little bit. Of, and then this little knight maneuver, also a good way to maximize your pieces. Uh, this is where he struggled because uh, he got to a position where it looks like he maximized everything. He has central control, every piece is developed, the rooks are connected, and then he immediately played a weird move. Like he played this. So I targeted the, the pawn right away. Um, and then we did this, and here I, I did something called keeping the tension. So I kept the tension between the rooks, and I, I went for a bit of simplification with the pieces, because I, I felt like my knight and bishop were not as good as his knight and bishop. We traded everybody, right? I, I also scanned that this check can be met with queen takes, guarding this. He traded everything, and right now is the critical moment. Probably objectively, the position's a, about equal, but he plays this, and immediately I have vision here. So I play rook a2, trying to deflect his queen away so I can take. And he goes here, and here checks, captures, and attacks, okay? This, this, both bad. But bishop takes f3, plays on the really strange coordination of his pieces. His queen needs to maintain the defense of the rook, so he can't take, although he ended up doing that. And he can't take with the pawn, because suddenly my rook opens up the vision and defends the queen. And it's just mate. It's just mate. So, what he should have done here, very important, you don't need to take. You can just defend against the threat of rook g2. You need to be able to adjust to the first blunder and not make a second one. And he actually made a second one. That's the blunder. Bishop f1, I think, maintains just a slightly worse position. He's just down a pawn. I can't, I can't take that. I, I don't have a threat here. And this is super important. You need to absorb the first punch and not get so flustered that you blunder a second time. That's, that, that's really the most important thing here. Um, now, did I have to play in the game the way I did with, you know, with, uh, like this? No. Um, you know, if I really wanted to in this position, I can just bring my pieces back in some way, like maybe c6, rotate the rook to f8. The reason I have to play c6 is he, he controls this square. Um, make sure my king is not susceptible to any back rank checks and then win that position. With the rook and the queen, it should be very easy. I mean, you just pick up the pawns, but I just wanted to make it an end game uh, to show that, you know, you, you can win the end game and um, it, is, it is what it is. Uh, rook a3 and queen c3 is also probably just the easiest, yes. So somebody in chat recommend that. I saw a chat challenge from Aishaw. Uh, you can challenge me, I'll play you after this. Okay, with e4, it's a totally different game. My e4 repertoire is aggressive. You're gonna get a lot of e4, e5 at this level. Knight c3, I'm hoping he pl Yes, Vienna Gambit, boom. All right, so we're going to try to win in under 20 moves. This is, this is the plan uh, against this 1800. So this is a very... Yeah, so Vienna Gambit declined is already bad for black. Knight c6, okay. So he faked me out. He played the Vienna, declined it, then he took. So I'm just going to play d4 and try to regain the pawn. Wow. <laughs> this, you can play like this, but it, it's not very good. Um... I mean, I'm just going to develop my pieces and castle and then win this back in the future. Defending with g5 is just... I mean, this is too, way too risky. Way too risky. I mean, I think g5 I can already punish with knight e5. So he probably shouldn't play g5. This is kind of King's Gambit style, but it's just not the same. I mean, it's, it's not the same. You've already committed to d6, which you're not really supposed to do in King's Gambit. And ugh, what is g6? I mean, I get, I get it. He's, you know, he's trying to... Um, okay, castles, again, gambit style, you need to just... Now, I think I can win the pawn back here by playing knight e2. That's honestly... And it might just very well be my best move. Uh, just knight e2. Knight d5 also. Knight e2. Maybe, honestly, putting the bishop here could have been smart just to guard this pawn. Uh, let's think. So if, if he... If he yeah, I'm going to go knight d5. I want to maintain the queen's pressure here. So if he plays g5, maybe I have some knight hop that hits the knight. Like I can move my knight here, for example. But if he castles and I take on f4, I have a huge center and I'm not down upon anymore. So... This is, uh... You know, and again, I'm not really afraid of this. It's just more time wasting in the opening from him. He can go bishop e6. That's why I said that, you know, maybe this is, 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 this is not so great. You know, maybe, maybe he has this move. Maybe he plays it because he's stream sniping. He's not stream sniping. Okay, um, easy. Knight takes f4. 
He's gonna take, of course, because there's no need to, to, to let me capture here. And okay, what is the position after 10 moves? White has a huge center. Uh, he's trying to go d5. Now, oftentimes when a move like this is coming, you know, you, first of all, you need to understand that it's coming. Uh, you can slide this guy back a square and or reinforce your center. And the idea of this is that if he plays d5, I go e5. That's the idea. But bishop d3, maybe he doesn't have to go d5. Maybe he can play queen b6, which is annoying. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce against this diagonal. So now I have three pawns on the dark squares. So make my center solid. And then go like this. This is my plan. This is my plan. If he, if he pushes, you know, taking is okay. It's, it's, a, it's a big decision. Because if I take, I give knight c6, right? So he can put the knight there. If I just go back and takes, takes, my bishops are a little loose in the center. But at least he can't develop. Sorry, at least he can't easily develop. And if I get a few moves... My goodness, I'm so sorry. Look bad at arrows. Bishop, D, uh, bishop h6 is a big problem. If I get rid of this bishop, he has no peace guarding his king anymore because his knight is gone. So that's another idea that, we, that we'll try to employ here. I also like his, his clock management. Okay, so one more idea is that I can go here. He takes, and then I just gambit this pawn. I just move knight e5. So I turn my attention to f7. Which, you know... Now that I'm looking at it, doesn't even look that bad. It actually kind of looks good. And I might do that. <laughs> I might do that. I might give him this and play knight e5. And normally taking on f7 and giving two pieces is bad. But when the king is going to be... Yeah, see, he's too scared. <laughs> he didn't even want to mess with it. He didn't even want to mess with that. So, But now he's trying to trade the bishop. So the first move immediately that comes to mind is knight g5. Or, or e5 not allowing this. Which one is better? It is tough to tell. I'm going to go e5. I'm not going to look for trades. I'm going to block all of this and maintain this idea. Now, his idea is going to be knight d7. Ooh. That just gives me a juicy target, but I guess he's just trying to go here. Hmm. Okay. So let's do this. Let's play queen d2, force the king there, Whoa! No, that's bad. No, that's that's just not good. Um, that's just not good. First of all, I mean the sacrifice is begging to be played, but is it good? Is it a good sacrifice? You need plus two. Remember that from past videos. You need to have two more attacking pieces than they have defenders. I'm not sure I have that here, honestly. Like I want to go here, here, here in bishop f6, but he might just have f6 there. And taking with the knight isn't that impressive. But let's go for it, because I have a nice idea. Again, keeping the tension. So he has to go here. I feel like if he allows me to go bishop f6, he's just completely lost. So he needs to evaluate that this move is not losing. Although I actually think it is losing. I just realized that I can take, 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 and when the rook gets there, I have a check. And I think that check just wins the game. Yeah, that check just wins the game. So f6 does not work, so this is losing. So the calculation here is f6 takes, 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 and then when the rook gets there, instead of taking the rook, I have check. I replace my bishop, yeah, and I think he just forgot about that. King f7 at the end, there is, yes, but you will see what happens. We will take the rook, and then the rook, uh, queen and rook will be met with rook f1. So check here. Looks like it guards everything, but after this capture, and now rook f1, we win the game. And he just resigns, because I guess he saw this. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I smelled blood. And, you know, you need to have this instinct. You need to have this instinct. Now, I could have, like, g5 I knew immediately was a blunder. Um, because, I mean, you just can't play like this. First of all, if I really wanted to play like this, I could have put the bishop back. And then played like h4, just looking, you know, to bring a bishop and a... Or, by the way, just very simply, bishop and queen into h7. Who is going to stop this, right? So, if he had gone, which what I thought, king h7, then I was going to go bishop c2 and try to play h4, h5. So, this was the idea. 
Because, again, it's plus two, you know, you need to have two more attacking pieces than defenders, and I have five attacking pieces here, right? Like, this is an attacker, this is an attacker, the rook is involved, h4, h5. So, position is very promising for white, because white has a very big lead in development and more space. When you have more space and more development, it's very easy to attack. h4, h5. I mean, you've got to, you know, you've got to dismantle the king, either with pieces or with pawns. Um, and we got this position just because of the aggressive nature of the opening. In how many moves did we win? Move 20. What did I say at the beginning of the game? That we were going to try to win this game within 20 moves. And we won on move 20. Move 20, rook takes f6, black resigns. So, with white, our opening is very aggressive, as you can tell. Like the Vienna, the, these positions, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're getting winning positions by move 20. With black, we're trying to be more solid. Uh, we're trying to, you know, just kind of outplay our opponents, navigate, you know, through the middle game. We have a viewer challenge. Oh, unfortunately for this gentleman, he got paired with white. But shout out to A. Shaw for taking the challenge. Uh, I have played him before. Um, I'm going to go two knights French. I've been playing a lot of B3 French, but I'm going to go two knights French this time. Although I think the last time we played, I played the two knights French against him. So maybe he's going to have some preparation. Um, so now E5. And the idea here is D4. And when C5 comes, you take it. Okay, you, you just take it. This is the idea. And then black plays bishop c5, bishop d3, bishop f4. So we, we have a little bit of a space advantage. Yep. Now bishop f4. And now this is already an error. You can't play that. Um, but, you know, there's, there's, there's actually already some danger for black here if black is not careful. So white is just solidifying in the center. Good development. Um... Oh yeah, I think he did this against me last time. Or someone did. Was it him? Maybe it was him. I don't think this is I don't think this is a good idea, but he's playing it so fast that it might just be theory. I guess d4 is a threat. I'm just gonna castle out of the way. Another thing to do is you can try to move your h pawn like this, but I'm just gonna go here. I mean, I guess he's trying to take and mess up my structure, but he's he's like he's moved this once, twice, and three times, right? So three of his first nine moves, he's only made nine moves, have been to move the bishop, and now it's gone. It's just gone. It doesn't exist anymore. So that's why I'm not, like, so sure about this, you know? Um, something is off about this strategy. So now... I guess he wants knight c4. I mean, I can stop that with queen e2. I can also maybe move the, like, h-pawn... Um, how do we, you know, I can attack the queen. How do we, like, maximize the position here? Okay, let's play rookie one. Rookie one's always a good move. Reinforcing the center on e5. Let's see what he does. He might over, and, and rook b1 as well. Just bringing the rook to the open file. Obviously, the rook is better on b1 than on a1. Somebody's asking what I play c4. Absolutely. Uh, right now, it doesn't look like it works. But a move like c4 is always interesting because, yeah, it opens up the center and it, and it kind of shreds open the lines I'm gonna go knight d4. This idea has something in mind. And also... Yeah, so he stops one, but now this, and I don't know how he guards that. I don't know how he guards that. I mean, he, he's just, he, like, he's moving the same pieces over and over, see? He hasn't done anything. He's just moving the pieces over and over. And, yeah, part of that is being cut off, you know, cut, you know, cut caught off guard in the opening is that he doesn't quite know the system now even this like he's he can't castle anymore we're just going for it i mean again five attacking pieces yeah that move is not bad uh obviously i don't want a queen trade i don't want to lose my queen i can go here and then just come back probably that's just the easiest rook f3 and, uh, you know, I've, I've always got this, I've got this, I've got this, I've got 96, so he's attacking this guy. Just slide over. And it seems like he hasn't made any progress in his position. You know, I've got one piece that hasn't moved. Pieces meaning non-pawn non entities. <laughs> um, so... This is, uh, this is bad. This is already very, very, very dangerous for black. I mean, his king doesn't have a defender. Just because pieces are near the king doesn't even mean that 
they're guarding the king. I mean, this is the, these are not guards of the king. No one is guarding these squares. If you've got a king guarding the pawns and no one else, this is going to be very bad. This is move 16, and my goal is to win every game with white by move 20. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Th this, no way. What is that? Um, okay, first of all, bishop g6 just looks devastating for black. I mean, just, like, going after this guy. Uh, and the idea is that if he does this, I just, it's discover check and I win his queen. And, I mean, the other idea is to take. I mean, just literally shred open the king, you know. I mean, I could have played bishop g5 first also. So, but this one's a bit more direct in some ways because if i move the queen i mean if i attack the queen he just moves it but i'm threatening to take and once that pawn is gone it's over but it's over i mean you know you can tell by my last few moves that clearly i'm i'm eyeing f7 um i'm not eyeing g7 because there's no easy way to attack this pawn so he plays f6 you know i kind of underestimated that move i i, I almost didn't see it so, take, take, check. If he takes, I get my queen in, and then if he blocks, I have rook f6 and it's over because he's pinned, and that wins. If takes, well, if queen takes, I just go check and I win the queen. So, takes, takes, bishop check, and if the king goes to either of these two squares, the bishop moves and I think it's mate. This move just wins. This move just wins. Check. And now the only thing that we had to calculate is takes, takes, queen e7, rook f6. That's the only reason this works. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Yeah, he moves, but now if I move my bishop anywhere, queen g6 is mate. So bishop e8, discover check. He only has two king moves. And queen g6 mate on move 21. So, I mean, like, a perfect attacking game by white. I mean, I, I hate to just, you know, openly compliment me myself, but, uh, like, this was the perfect two knights French destruction. You know? Like, again, this strategy that he employed with not moving any new piece, you know, and, and, and here it's like, well, how does white, you know, you, you might get distracted, right? You might get distracted by the two knight moves here, you gotta play on the queen, so he's coming in. No, I mean, let friends, let's not forget that like you're you're the guy calling the shots, right? Now he stops this idea to get into d6, but I mean, probably the most advanced maneuver in the game was rookie three rookie. Yes, that that was probably the most advanced moment. Um, because uh, you know, otherwise there there is no clear path to f7. So, rough. I mean, wow. Um, everything else was kind of straightforward. You know, don't trade the... I mean, I, I can't say I did anything crazy. Just a, a quick calculation here just to show that, like, it looks like he's out of the woods. But uh, that's why you always look for checks. And um, coordination here is deadly. He, he can't go here, my bishop. So, what can you do? What can you do? All right, let's keep it going. Got a lot of people in chat wanting to play me. I'm just jumping in the pool, my friends. Um, Kazbek, 66, 1,000 bullet player. D3, B6. Um, okay, so I'm playing my... I've had this already today. I'm going to play D5. Maybe he goes here. And we're going to have a structural game. I'm not going to let him go here. I'm going to play D4. This is a... Um, this is a very unique position. So my bishop is super strong. And I can put my knight here by playing knight h6. He's probably... Whoa. Why is he giving me this? Okay. Another common idea is h5. It looks very silly, but what I'm doing is I'm securing the dark squares for my knight. This is a very bad structure for white. Um, that move is, like, logical, because maybe he wants to take. I don't know what he wants. Um, I'm going to play g6, just so this is guarded. And another idea, maybe to even get rid of the knight, so e5 is super weak. So, 
For example, bishop e7. It's gonna go knight c. Well, knight c4 is just b5, no? Get the knight out. A, a play, like, he's gonna do the same thing. You see how I have knight and pawn together? So that he can't kick me out? Knight c4 often comes with a4 in a lot of positions. You know, knight c4, I can go b5, force him back, then play a6. <laughs> okay, guys, when your opponent plays knight f3, knight g5, knight f3 in the opening, they did something wrong, okay? This is them admitting that they did something wrong. Um, I mean, I want to play h4, and then knight g3. I think that was always my plan. Hop in here, put some pressure. The other idea in the future is maybe I can open up the position directly to his king. Like... I have such a powerful piece. What he should be doing is maybe trading it, you know? He should be trading my light squared bishop. Uh, I did say b5 was my idea here, right? b5? And if this, then knight e3. So some people psychologically will not go back because they don't want to. Yeah, and there you go. There you go. And he just blunders knight e3 because he doesn't want to, he, he just doesn't want to go back. You know, he's like, ah, oh, no. And now he blunders a full rook because of his, you know, his stubbornness. He didn't want to go back to a3 because he was already there. He wants to play a different move. And in doing so, do I even want to take that, by the way? Like, that's a terrible rook. This is the worst piece that white has, right? And it's, it's a free rook, but when he goes here and here, he's just going to win my knight. I'm going to go back. I feel like my knight is stronger than every piece he has. So why give it away? If here, 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 takes, queen takes, I'm threatening mate, bishop f3... Wait, that's just like completely crushing. I mean, again, like this shows you the power of the knight. If g5, knight e4, it's a little risky to open the position like this, but this is like d destruction. I mean, it's complete destruction. Yeah, and, and it shows you like, don't be stubborn. Admit your mistakes in chess. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I figured he was going to do this. He wasn't going to take. But, um... What if I just take on f4? Like, through all of this chaos, I can take this, I can take the rook, I can take this. Well, if I take on f4, right, he takes my knight, I take back, like, with the deep on. I mean, his position is awful. His position is completely losing. Yeah, this is what he's doing. Now, f or d, which way do I take? I want to keep the bind. Maybe I should have taken the rook. But, uh... Which way do I take? Take with the D pawn. I don't want to open his rook. Look, he's, he's playing at light speed now. No, no, no. We're not grabbing a rook. We're not, we're not, we're not grabbing a rook. Okay, first of all, I can push and he can't take. He can't take because his knight is hanging. And I'm also threatening to take. It's a very funny position. I'm up two pawns. And my pawns are the barrier preventing him from getting anything. So. What is this? Can't I just take that? Hello? What are you doing? What is this? Does he want to take this? Like if takes, he wants to take on c4? What if I play takes, 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 check? Yeah? That's what he wants. Uh... I don't know, I guess, I guess queen d6 is the best move. Can't take my pawn. Alrighty, let's go simple chess. So we're going to take on c4. Now, the worst nightmare here for me is that somehow he gets this out, this out, this out, and completely overruns me with his pieces. Ooh. That is a good move. I underestimated this move. Let's go rook g8. And yeah, so you see, he's actually getting some play. I was a little bit lackadaisical. And he's going to play rook d1. So he's going to get some counterplay. And I only have 40 seconds. If rook d1, I keep drawing... Wait, why did he do that? Why did he do it like this? Taking the pawn first. Some tricks on the king somehow. I need this knight to move. That's what I need. Bishop f3. Takes, takes. Queen d2 check. Takes, pawn takes. Yeah, but also takes there's rook f3. Okay, I'm gonna take on f3. He's not threatening anything, so maybe knight very simply to d7. I, I like this rook here for me. 
It's just not, it, it, it can't move. And rook d1 is no longer possible. He pins me. Yeah, uh, I guess I'm going to reinforce with my rook. And king e7, I think, is the way to go here. So hiding your king amongst your pieces. I have this little formation here. I'm completely safe. And what's making all of this possible is he doesn't have any d-file play. So e5, e4 is also possible. Uh, queen d2. You know what also makes this easy is I'm up two pawns. So simplifying with like rook g3 in a second, this should be an easy win. Um, any threats with this move? Rook c6, I guess, is his threat. Okay, but what if I play rook g3? So again, rook c6, I can just move the queen out of the way. Ah, rook d1 is another idea. Um, that is a bit annoying. Queen c7, again, I don't have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of time. Remove this just in case. But I'm completely safe. I am completely safe. Let's take. But of course, it's a little bit of a stressful position. Although, if this. Queen c5. Oh no, but then rook takes d7. Ah, I, need, I do need to be careful. Whoa. Okay, queen b4, knight c5. This, I was not afraid of this. <laughs> this is the last thing that I was afraid of. The big trade. Is he going to take my pawn? Is that the idea? But then queen d6. And we have a queen trade. So I don't know why in a completely lost position he would trade pieces. So, yeah, queen d6 and um, it was check, so I had to block. No checks on f6, queen d2, e2, gg. I mean, I'm getting very low on time. I'm sorry if I'm triggering anybody's anxiety. Um, but uh, this game in the opening was very funny because I actually predicted a couple of his bad decisions. And uh, it just shows you that, you know, players do make these errors. So e2 and he doesn't have a check. I'm just promoting and it's over. He will spend the next few seconds contemplating his existence, and then he will promptly... Oh, I thought he was going to resign, but he is not resigning. Oh, we are still playing. Okay. We're still playing. I'm not sure why we're still playing. We're no longer playing. So the opening, this e6, b6 system with f4, d5 is always good. And then don't let them block in your bishop. So reinforce like this maneuvering to f5 he could have gone g4 here but then i hop in and i take the bishop and another again common idea to support the knight on f5 is to move the h pawn locking the knight into f5 with h4 playing on the weak dark squares and then here you know this is just silly this is just silly it's just stubbornness right here um knight a3 and you know, I would have gone a6, and the position would have been completely fine for, for, for him. I, I mean, I guess it's better than this. And I mean, you know, here I was also pretty stubborn, you know, with this crazy g5 idea. I mean, you can just take on f1, you know, you can take on f1. The bad thing about my plan, the reason why I'm playing some more risky stuff is because I, I also want to give you guys an understanding of how to navigate tough positions, dangerous positions. Why g5 was not good is because I opened the position for his pieces. That's really all I did. Is like, you know, here if I take, and he takes, and I just play solid chess, like knight c6, how's he ever getting these bishops out, right? How? How's he getting the knight out? So, uh, it was a dangerous plan, this g5, but... Uh, you know, it worked out in the end. I kept, I, I kept control of the position. I kept, you know, I maintained my advantage of two pawns. There was probably things I could have done a little bit differently. He could have done something differently right here. He should have played rook fd1. And then, you know, I would have probably played like bishop d5 or then he would have played like this. And, and this is, this is dangerous. It's a dangerous position for, for black. You know, knight d7 takes takes. I mean, I'm up two pawns, but my king's in the center and He's got some active plays. His king's all of a sudden kind of safe. So it's double-edged. Position is double-edged. The easiest way to put it. Uh, let me quickly refresh my page. 
was a promised server sort of server thing. Server thing was supposed to happen, but I guess not, so we'll keep it rolling. Danny Wrench. What a name. Let me just make sure that this is a legitimate account. Yep, several years old. E6. B6. Bishop B7. Please go E4. Yes. This is the most fun chapter. I love this chapter. F3, F5, chapter 4 of the course takes here. Um, Something is wrong with Bishop D3 in this position. I should try to remember what it is. Hmm. I think it's this. I think it's... Takes, 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 takes. I think that's what it is. I think it's takes. Yeah, this is what's wrong with this. Takes, 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 takes. Bishop takes e4. And I... So I'm going to do this. Wait. If this... Does he have this move? E6? No way, right? We need 5? Wow. What? Maybe I mixed up the move order. Maybe not. If this... This... Because the idea of bishop e4 is takes queen h4, but if takes... Here... Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Queen e5. Knight f6, bishop e4. Yeah, that doesn't even work. You know how I should have played this? I think I should have taken like this. I should have taken on e4 first, maybe. Hmm, this is a good lesson in remembering your opening prep. Queen e5, he takes my rook. And then if I play something like... Yeah, I, that just doesn't work. He just takes my rook at the end. Wow. Well, this is stupid. <laughs> I mixed up my move order in the opening. Huh. Well, that's mildly frustrating. Now I have to deal with a bad position. But it's good. At least I didn't get caught. Man, that's frustrating, though. Let's see. Bishop before queen g there, queen h. Yeah. It just doesn't work. Wait, what? White won because I was thinking? What is this? What is this? I'm not even editing the. You. The... Uh. Okay. Don't think is the what? No, wait, I I lost that by abandoning the game. Okay, well at least this is gonna be a fun blooper. Oh my god, I can't believe what that is. That is. Yeah, this is bad. I should have done it in. No, even does this move order also not work? Oh, it doesn't, because he has king f1. Wow. Yeah, that is, uh, that is, that is not cool. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I guess I should just play knight e7 here. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I didn't remember this move. Well, it's the first loss. I mean, it wasn't quite a loss, but, uh... Kind of a loss. Sort of a loss. Not really a loss. But I'll take it. I'll take it on the chin. So takes, takes, and, um, you know, I thought I was just beelining to this, but I guess queen h5 here is just really strong. Huh. That is a bummer, though. Okay. I don't want to kill too much more time, so let's continue. But yeah, that, that obviously kind of... Well, we have white now again, so... 
e4, g6, d4. Right? My opponent is thinking. Knight f3. c5. This is called the sniper. So against this, taking is good. More deep thoughts by my opponent. What do I? What? What is? What? What is the way to go about the game here? Um, how do I usually like to do this? So I think it's c three, and then knight a three. This is the this is the the tricky line. And then I think it's like wait what? Isn't knight b five just like crushing here? The idea is bishop e3 and he he doesn't have a he doesn't have a way to get back. So this is the idea knight a3 knight b5. Now players play a6 and you hit him with bishop e3 and they go here. And there's some way to just completely win here. Okay, first of all I have a very funny move knight a7. So knight a7, knight a7 is a hilarious move. I also have a4. a4 just holds the knight there. Um, I also have, do I have queen a4? Queen a4 maybe just bishop d7. Well, apparently I can't think for a minute, so. Knight a7 could just be the, like, the way to go. Just, just go. Just go. <laughs> Go get the go get the bishop on c8. <laughs> that might just be the way to do it. This doesn't work because uh, takes and just bishop d2, and then I take the bishop. So my position from the opening is solid. I have two bishops. I'm going to castle, I'm going to be happy. Now I'm going to think. How do we make progress from an equal position? So first things first, I'm going to offer him a trade of knights. If takes, I get a huge center, and I get rook c1. Okay, he doesn't seem particularly phased by my huge center and my rook c1. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, we need six maybe, hitting this and this. Uh, 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 uh. The other thing I can do is play it a bit more slowly, so something like h3, preventing knight g4, and then looking to expand. So, th the other thing that we'll notice is we have completely symmetrical structure of pawns, right? We have all the same pawns and the open c file. So, taking advantage of that is going to be a little bit challenging. Uh, and he's also looking for control of the c-file. So another idea is maybe like f4, f5. Like this, th what we've learned about same side castling attack. Yeah, like rook c8 is good, but there's nothing there. So I'm just going to keep rolling with f5. So f5 now. I mean, taking is just not good for him because I play rook takes. I'm not going to take with the pawn. I'm going to take with the rook. Uh, the other idea is that I'm probably just going to take this pawn when given the opportunity. So, symmetrical structure, two bishops, you can play positionally, but he doesn't have a lot of weaknesses. That move I really don't like, but maybe it's not bad. Uh, is he trying to take like that? Uh, maybe he's trying to copy me. Okay, I don't care. Copy me. Imitation is the highest form of flattery. Maybe queen b3, pressure here. I like that. Queen b3, pressure here, pressure here. Not attacking anything just yet. But, good move. I mean, e5, you know, it looks nice if he takes, but he can probably just move his knight. So, if he plays, yeah, if he plays d5, uh, what if I just... So, we had a very similar position in that game. Remember a couple games ago where we, we got this big pawn chain against the bishop? And if this, I mean... about that move dude his knight is like isn't his knight trapped can't i just take away 
King H2 and G4 just winning a piece? How does he get a knight square here? Just King H2. I mean, it's very, like, chess is a logical game. He wants to go here, you know? I take it away from him. I'm not trading the rooks. I'm keeping the tension. We've learned that throughout. So, yeah, I, he has to play bishop h8. I mean, his only move here to get a knight square is to play bishop h8, which is a very depressing move to have to make. Uh, he's not making the move bishop h8. Rook f1. Oh, bishop f8. Also, yeah, I guess this... This very, very sad necessity. So I'm still going to go g4 because the pawn on g4 completely dominates the knight on g7. Very common motif. Motif. M-O-I-T-F. M-O... M-O-I-T-F? M-O-T-I-F. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> Learning a lot of things about myself throughout this series. Like, I can disconnect for thinking... Motif. Uh... I'm going to play a prophylactic move, maybe. Well, I also have this maneuver. But he's like somehow very well defended here. So how do we break in? How do we break in? He's going to play bishop e7. Maybe we play bishop g5. Maybe this is the way we improve our position. Bishop g5, bishop f6. Just getting right in there. His knight is completely dominated. Pressure is here. He has no way to invade. His queen also doesn't have any invasion points. Bishop f6 now. So I want to take on my terms. He might take and see this check, but I think I'm going to take with the rook. I don't think I'm going to take with the pawn. Although, no, no, this wins. This is winning. Is there any threat to that move? I don't want to play g5. I give knight f5. How do I win this easily? Okay. I need to make a move. I've been struggling to do at times. So let's play h4. Maybe try to push along this file. King can also hide here. As usual, we need to not lose on time. Um, okay, now maybe g5 is actually not super stupid, but he can come back. If he's smart, he's going to come back. So let's see if he returns. That would be the smart thing to do. To just go back to g7. Yeah, I need to play, like I said, I need to play fast. B5 is just weird. It's just not a smart move, I think. Now I'm looking at this, and so maybe he comes back. Now he... Okay, no, he trades into a very, very, very bad position. He just gives me a monster pawn, but he might go here seeing that, to which I will respond with queen d4. I'm still gonna... Uh, queen g4. And now h5 is coming, and I think it's all over. It's also all over because I think I can sacrifice and play rook g1. So taking, giving me this was just not, was just not that good. Just not smart. Any threat? Ooh, some tricks on my king. Some t oh, don't flag, buddy. Three seconds. Oof. Don't flag. But he had tactics. He, li he lined it up to my king. And he had tactics on f6, just rook g1 now, and sacrifice, and it's gg. I'm not even going to sacrifice, I'm just going to play h5. Takes its mate. There's the desperation sacrifice, but there is nothing in the position. And, uh, oh, I thought he had just lost on time, but he did not. Now simple chess, trade the rooks. And he loses. Woof! Woof! So... Some weird stuff in the opening, just getting the two bishops. I mean, you don't have to play like this. There's other ways. But this is a good way to blunt the sniper. If you ever want to deal with the modern with c5, taking, and knight a3, knight b5. Um, a few questions about this game. In the middle game, why not f takes... Uh, the question was, go back to fg6 in the middle. Could I have played e5? Ah, I see your point. Yeah, so you're saying that you want to get this in. But like I said, here he has knight d5. So anytime you attack a knight with a pawn, you need to not just think, can you get taken? You need to think about this move. And I don't think... Uh, I don't think that this works, because the bishop is hit with a tempo, and this is too bad. So then if I move my bishop, he just takes my pawn. So any knight move that you want to, uh, any knight attack you want to make, you know, in the middle of a position, 
you got to be ready to deal with uh, the knight moving. I mean, bishop g5 is fine, but you're, you're, you're missing the point. The point is not to lose the pawn. That's the point. That's, you know, and uh, f4, f5, then taking, and this move, and he committed his pawn quickly, got his knight in a very bad position, and we were just able to very slowly use the advantage on, on the king side. When, do you, when you start attacking, when do you decide you need to bring more pieces? Because I don't know the balance, maybe lose the moment. Well, look, um, in a position which has basically symmetrical structure and no obvious weaknesses, um, you can start a pawn attack on the same side. So f4, f5, pawn attack, you know, this just comes with experience. This just comes with playing tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of chess games. You can tell very quickly, like in this position, that g4, g5 is not, is not an attack. He's just going to move his knight. Instead... Opening my rook is the right way to go. And a move like this, queen b3, is just, it's a balance of improving your position and at the same time also attacking your opponent. Uh, queen b3 doesn't have a threat, it's just making the queen better. I've kind of talked throughout this series, you know, when you don't have an immediate tactic, just improve your position. Optimize the placement of your pieces. The queen is optimized here because on, on b3 it pressures e6 and b7. And so, you know, that's why, that's why it's the best move. Uh, we're gonna play one more game. We're gonna play one more game. The video is already very long, actually. So thanks for thanks for being patient. Another e4. We've had a lot more games with white today. Ooh, anti Scandi. A lot of people tell me that they don't like playing against the Scandinavian. Uh, I like to play like this. Knight f3. Everybody, listen up. This is the course recommendation. What on earth is bishop f5? I've actually never seen the move bishop f5. Honestly. Uh, wow. I don't know. Okay, d4. I'm just gonna go bishop e2 in castles. Did I just fall for a trap? Uh oh. Wow. Queen e4 in takes. Would you look at that? Ah! That's really funny. Okay. So, when you fall for a trap, you need to offset falling for the trap with quick development and i am going to use his bishop here to get my quick development so i've got three pieces developed and i'm going to basically treat this like a gambit so now i have four developed pieces for the cost of one pawn and a really dumb bishop and if he plays c6 i'm going to go b3 although maybe then e5 is a good move my wow Wow, bishop f5, queen e4, huh? Very tricky. Okay, so I'm just gonna castle then. But I don't have b3 because somehow e5 is coming. That's so funny. b3, e5. Wow. Really? I somehow don't believe. I somehow do not believe in this. b3, e5. Let's say I take with a knight. He takes my knight, I take his bishop. Nah, I don't believe. Play it. Why would I trade on b8? Why would I give away such a powerful, beautiful bishop for this absolute garbage knight? Don't do that. Don't do that to yourselves. Oh, e6 is also pretty logical. I forgot that he just has a very simple e6. Um, wow, that was, uh, that was tricky. Okay, so here's what he wants. He wants me to take and take my knight. I want him to move here and lose. So what if bishop c1? No joke, what if bishop c1? He's going to take, I'm going to get my bishop here, he's going to play bishop b5, <laughs> but my bishop is so strong on a3, I like it so much. Maybe just knight c2 though. Maybe just taking on a4. Okay, let's take on a4. Maybe he checks me. Okay, rook b1. So I'm using the ugly pawn structure and being down a pawn. And let's see what we can accomplish in this position. So I want to go a5, but then b5. I also want to go knight e5, but somehow that doesn't threaten anything. I also want to castle, so let's castle. Knight e7. Wait, the bishop is trapped. Oh my god, he has another... St oh no, no, knight d5, now I take. Knight d5, now I take. He trapped his own bishop. <laughs> Amazing. 
Okay, so he just played a natural developing move, 97, and yeah, and now I take. Now I take. And that's the difference. And now I get the bishop. Yeah. There you go. And uh, I think the, the easiest way to convert this position is to play knight to e5, bishop rook. So that really is the lesson in when you get caught in the opening with some crap. Like, this was crap. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it right now. For the kids watching, this was bad. Don't say that word, it's a bad word. Um, when you get caught, like, like, the reason why it was not, like, that good is because what he really got was a pawn up in a position where he has no development whatsoever. It was a trap. It was a trap. Uh, which rhymes with the other thing that I said, the C word. Um, so just rook c3 and I'm going to pick up this pawn. And so the way you have to react to that is, all right, how do I get full development? Trading the queens is not a problem as long as I have four developed pieces. And you saw that despite winning my pawn, he lost the piece on move 13. Looks like his opening wasn't all that. It's my knight, knight d7, he's just going to play rook d8. But if knight d7, rook d8, I am taking on c5. Knight c5, I need to make a little square for my king. And there you go, we've had a bit of everything today. Like, I have not been caught in the opening so far in this series. I've also not lost in this series. Um, but that game, that winning by abandonment nonsense was, uh, you know, it is what it is. I guess it was uh, either a, you know, a server update, we, we got caught with the server update after all, uh, or, you know, the, it, they just thought I was stalling out, and that's not what Gotham Guide was doing. Hmm. Wants my pawn. And you know what I want? I want this. I want... Or knight, knight b3, maybe. Or maybe... Knight... Now let's go knight a6. Here, here. Here's the idea. Takes, takes. Yeah takes uh i miscalculated i thought i had rook c7 but i just realized he has rook a4 okay but let's see if he finds that let's see do we have any tricks doesn't look like it i think we're just gonna have to give a check defend the bishop I mean, defend the rook with the bishop and then play something simple like uh, knight c5. Takes the rook, we will just be a piece up in the endgame. I'm assuming that he's going to play something like rook c4. Wanna be... And again, this is why making this little square for the king is, not, uh, king is nice, because he doesn't have rook a1. Knight e4, we're threatening knight d6, let's see if he blunders it. I'm going to try to play fast. I'm kind of tired of being in time trouble. I've been in, and he hangs a rook. I mean, like, so funny, right? Like, the guy is attacking my knight, and he doesn't even think where I'm going to check him. And that's it. That's it. And we win. Honestly, pretty fun hour of chess today. Like, we folks are asking me, uh, in the other game, the game that I lost by, like, by here, what was wrong with, first of all, queen h4? The problem with queen h4 is just g3. Back to this position is I can't actually take this with anybody. And I realized that after the trick bishop takes e4, the queen h5, g6, and this like ridiculous move. And after takes, takes, I'm busted. Like I, I just, I don't have, maybe I have this, you know, but uh, he goes king d2 and I have two hanging pieces. So I got a little overzealous in the opening. Actually, what I should have done here. I guess, I think what I should have done is check here in queen h5. This is actually what I recommend in my course. And the other thing is knight e7, just knight e7. So I forgot my own prep, which, which happens. I, I don't get a lot of people who play f3 with bishop d3. I generally get bishop d3 or f3 and not the two of them combined. So yeah, that's a bummer, but... Uh, 
Anyway, if you guys are enjoying, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm already getting a lot of comments in my live stream. You guys are awesome. And, uh, all right, the next one's going to be a real grind, 2,000 plus.